We'd like to warn you that there's some graphic content ahead, which may not be suitable for all audiences. Hi, I'm Scott Margolin, and welcome to the season finale of Arc Week. Today's subject is DC arcs. Now, DC gear has always been out there, but as we all know, in the last few years, there's been an enormous expansion of the gear because of alternative energy sources like electric vehicles, solar panels, and battery storage. So, as often happens, industry is way out ahead of the science and the standards, and Tyndale has recognized this gap and attempt to set out to answer some of your questions. Are DC arcs different from AC arcs? How does the energy differ, and uh, is there a different energy necessary to cause an arc or sustain one in air? Will the same amount of energy ignite flammable clothing as with an AC arc? And the million dollar question, of course, is, will my arc rated PPE, which was arc rated in an AC arc, perform as I need it to in a DC arc? We worked very closely with both Kinectrix and Kima Laboratories to convert their systems to DC and replicate the AC work you've always seen us do in DC arcs. Our hats are off to both labs for the willingness to help research these critical issues, so let's get to the answers. DC arcs are different than AC arcs in one very important way. You may already be aware that AC means alternating current and DC means direct current, and that what that means is AC arcs are occurring in a sine wave that's up and down 60 times in a second which that means is that an AC arc will be on and off or in and out with each cycle of that arc. There are 60 cycles in a second in the United States, and so a 15 cycle arc, a quarter of a second is the duration, that arc would be on and off or up and down the sine wave 15 times in that exposure duration. Where a DC arc, it's not really cycles now, it's about milliseconds because it's not cycling, but a DC arc will be essentially on all the time, and we can clearly see that difference visually. So we can see that DC arcs look different from AC arcs, but that really begs the question, are they different in their impact on flammable work clothing or arc rated work clothing? Well, we did that work and we're gonna share it right now. Here's our DC arc. And you can see an instantly on fire, not just waist up, but also on the left leg below the waist. This is catastrophic. And in close up, this is a graphic angle. Obviously, this is absolutely catastrophic. You have a flammable base layer, which adds fuel to the fire. You can see the fire rapidly spreading to the back of the garment and down the left leg. The garment begins to melt. Pull the mannequin back a little bit. And here comes our fire extinguisher. And hit it with an extinguisher, not just once, but twice to put that fire out. This would result in a minimum of 45 to 50% second and third degree burn. So. The bottom line is that DC arcs can and do sustain an air at relatively low voltages, and they will ignite flammable work clothing at the same low voltages as AC arcs. So the first big answer here is yes. DC arcs do pose the same hazard to flammable clothing that AC arcs do. The fix there is simple. Don't work energized if you don't have to, and don't wear fuel if you're working energized around DC arcs. The second big piece of it is taking a preliminary look at what happens when you expose arc-rated clothing to a DC arc. Now, you may already be aware that the arc rating standard, ASTM F1959, which is conducted at Kinectrix, uses AC arcs to rate the clothing. And so we replicated all the work you've seen Tyndale do for years by putting arc-rated clothing in front of AC arcs and disconnects with DC arcs. And as you can see here, Arc rated clothing as it exists today does protect the wearer from a DC arc of a similar magnitude as it would an AC arc. What that means is that we put mannequins wearing the exact same clothing in front of the exact same arcs with all the same input energy, except one was AC and one was DC, and the clothing looks essentially identical coming out of the arcs. So this gave us high confidence in the early going of this research that Arc rated clothing as it's currently configured and rated does protect against DC arcs. But then we get to the million dollar question. Do the arc ratings differ? And if so, in which direction and by how much? The quantifiable part of this, it's one thing to have the visual confirmation that we're probably just fine in our current arc rated clothing. It's another entirely to have the actual data. Neither Tyndale nor Connectrix could afford on our own to undertake as much research as would be necessary to definitively answer that question. There's simply too many arcs. So Brian Shields at Connectrix went out and together we recruited a number of other companies into a coalition to provide money to fund that research and answer this question once and for all. 
Tyndale and Kinetrix are proud to partner with Westex, Gore, Glen Raven, NSA, and Bulwark to bring our industry this highly valuable research. And we're going to present the results of this research in Jacksonville at the IEEE Electrical Safety Workshop in early March. So stay tuned for that. I do have a little bit of breaking news I am able to share ahead of the Electrical Safety Workshop. We're very encouraged that we're both able to convert the systems and reliably and quantifiably generate arc ratings on DC arcs and by the preliminary research appearing to show that there is very little, if any, difference in arc ratings between AC and DC arcs. Now, that's great news, but that's all laboratory. And as we all are well aware, this is already becoming an issue in the real world. As an electrician, I can't wait for emerging research and standards. I've got to get the job done. But that attitude and complacency can cost you your life. Recently, there was a young electrician that was installing some power for some EV chargers when a substantial arc flash occurred, igniting his clothing. A 22-year-old man from Stacy, Minnesota, suffered life-threatening injuries on Monday when a charging station he was working on at a Brainerd Gas Area gas station exploded. The incident happened at the Holiday Station store on Delwood Drive in Baxter. According to a message from family and friends, Xavier Shavir was working as a high-voltage technician he was testing a molded case circuit breaker of 400 amps, but was unaware the circuit was energized. He clamped onto the circuit, resulting in an arc flash incident, an explosion, and a fire. Shavir was airlifted from Brainerd to Hennepin County Medical Center in Minneapolis. He is in critical condition with full body third degree burns and various traumas from the blast. He was placed into a medical coma and is projected to stay in the hospital for eight to nine months with 40 plus surgeries for his skin. Currently he is on a feeding tube and receiving oxygen to keep him stable. So there's a terrible example. Our thoughts and prayers are with Xavier during his recovery. It's gonna be a long process as you heard. As an arc flash survivor who wasn't wearing any PPE myself, I'm telling you there is no reason to wait for the research. Put on your PPE, whether it's AC or DC gear. In other words, don't wear fuel. Don't work energized, if at all possible, and most of all, don't be me. We just wanted to both say a sincere thank you for tuning into Season 5 of Arc Week. We hope this has been beneficial for your teams. What I want to say is make sure you're wearing your PPE and wear it correctly. Yeah, whether it's AC or DC, you pose the same risk of ignition of flammable clothing. Want to hammer home the point one more time. If you eliminate the four mistakes that we talked about this season, you eliminate virtually all of the catastrophic injuries and fatalities from ArcFlash. Thank you. See you next season.